Welcome to the Ignorance of Strength Podcast. I'm your host, Fabian Motherfucking Ojeda, and I don't know shit, but that's okay. All right, all right, let's get this shit started. Thank you, everybody, for listening to the Ignorance of Strength Podcast. Hope you all enjoyed episode number 112 with the uh, that guy. You know, everybody knows that guy, Larry Hankin. Uh, a lot of people actually really enjoyed that episode. We got a lot of good feedback on it, and uh, we're actually uh, going to have him back on very soon. I believe in October once his uh, book is out, and we'll get some more some more behind the scenes stories. Definitely, you know, want to get give some give some more give some more of what the people want to the people. But we're back today with a brand new guest, and you know, talk to him a little bit uh, before we press record here. Uh, so he's got some interesting stories. Definitely a lot lot to tell. I mean, uh, let's welcome to the podcast for the very first time, DJ Shatine. How you doing? Doing great. How are you, Fabian? I'm surviving. Surviving. <laughs> like I'm staying, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, Thank you stay, for staying in there, but I uh, can't complain. Yeah. Good, good, good. No, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Where, where are you joining us from today? Uh, I am based in Brookline, New Hampshire. Okay. So nice. We're out of, outside of the Boston area. So yeah, I try to look people up all the time. I'm like, and you're for whatever reason your profile said like Norwich in England. Uh, no, uh, Norwich University. It's a private military university up in Vermont. I went to school there. See, that's that's where I'm ignorant, and that's where my strength <laughs> comes in because I'm always asking questions. All right, good. Hey, you, you ask them, I'll, I'll answer. Definitely. Um, now, you know, we uh, before we press record here, we you know uh, we talked about you know being creative and have having a lot of different. Uh, you know, outlets and, and, and adventures in life and whatnot. Um, and so, you know, first and foremost, one of the things I, I did want to talk about um, is your, you know, like a lot of the people that I, that I interview and it doesn't, and I tell you this, it doesn't get, it doesn't get boring. It doesn't get repetitive and it, it, because everybody has a different story. Right. And, yep. but I do, I do tend to have a lot of people that are, you know, in, in, in either up and coming or have been in it for a while, um, but that are in, in entertainment, right. Or trying to break through in entertainment. And everybody's story, you know, is is interesting because it's a different path and, and you know, it's a different mindset for everybody, too. You know, some are very humble, some are very driven, um, some are, you know, like they're OK being, you know, how do I put it? And, and without being disrespectful, like the backseat, you know, like not the star, you know, and I, I always thought, like, if you're going to be a, a famous, you, you want to be the number one, you want to be the star. And to have that different perspective, I'm like, well, well you're right, you're always you don't have to be the star, but you're always working. You know, it's 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 different, and, and and I never thought about that. But you are in, you know, that same kind of field there, and and um, I want to hear about your story. You know, I want to hear about your, uh, you know, uh, uh, you you in the entertainment business, how you got there, what your perspective is, you know, and and where you see yourself going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I've. Uh... I'm 38 now, and I would say probably about five years ago is when I started the journey into the entertainment industry because I realized I just um, I just love to create, and I've done a lot of that in my personal life with other things we can talk about. But let's focus on the acting side, and uh, and so I started taking a couple classes, and I really enjoyed it. I've always loved movies, and my brothers and I joke around with each other all the time, like. We, I don't think we we rarely have serious conversations with each other, <laughs> um, but we're always throwing around movie quotes and everything else, all the yeah. all the legacy greats. Uh, and um, and so getting into acting, I started uh, getting onto some background roles um, on on like Castle Rock. I and then just in the last year and a half, I've had an opportunity to be on more major productions as just background, just to get a taste of it, to see what it, it's like and everything. And I also took on a more major role in a, a small um kind of psa on drug abuse uh oh. that was done that was a uh, kind of it was a waiting for godot kind of and they changed it into um this guy who's waiting for his friend and uh mm -hmm. drug user, and he, he's kind of already recovered and he's sitting there in the park and uh donnie in boston and it was written by a person who had gone through a lot of that in his own life so mm -hmm. it was it's really a pleasure to work on that but it was a it was a long one, and I think uh, once I got a taste of that, it was like, okay, this is what I'm here for. Like to to think through that character's lines and then present it on camera. Right. So then after that, I was able to uh, be background on Don't Look Up, and then oh uh, man, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it was exciting because uh, it was on a day that uh, 
Jennifer Lawrence and Leonardo DiCaprio were there. They're kind of like walking onto the airplane when they're getting shuffled at the beginning. And you mm -hmm. can see my side profile and my giant head there walking by in the background for about a quarter of a second. But, uh, but it was fun doing that for me and it was exciting. And I had a, an opportunity to be on another major one recently. I, I, I'm not going to talk about it because it hasn't been released yet. Okay. But, uh, but I was able to be, again, share a camera with another A-lister. And it was, uh, it was exciting for me. Uh, again, not that I said any lines or anything, but just... Right, right. I mean, um, you know, don't look up. What a kind of, like, surprise, like... Uh, I don't want to say a surprise hit, but everybody was talking about it, you know? And, yeah. um, I mean, it had to be a hit. I mean, every, every, all the people that were in it, but... Um, just kind of like a weird, a weird hit, you know, because it, I think it attacked both sides of it did. It didn't keep peace with anyone. Right. It, which I think is what made it such a success is that what one set of people saw it their way and the other one saw it their way and it was perfect. So, yeah. Cause I have people, you know, that are kind of, you know, uh, uh, super one-sided uh, on either left or right. And, and, you know, mm -hmm. The, the left is just like, ha, ah, they're making fun of you, right, dummies. And yeah, the right's yeah. like, no, they're making fun of you. Like, they make fun of everyone. Yeah, that's that. It, I mean, I like to sit on the fence. I like to kind yeah. of think out for myself. I'm much more into individualism than trying to label myself with something that puts me in a group of people that think a certain way. Yeah. And, and, I, and I agree with that. You know, I think um, maybe a lot of uh, us, uh, I, I, I think I'm pretty creative too. Maybe uh, that yeah. has something to do with our mindset. But I think a lot of us, uh, creative folk we kind of think the same way i was talking to uh larry hankin last time on the podcast and he has like the same you know ideas like why do we have to you know, we, i talked about like you know why does it have to be like we're picking a football team on sunday morning you yeah, know yeah. like it so die work. hard like yeah. they're they're politicians they work for us you know they should be more concerned with them uh you know uh uh you know doing well for us you know not uh, us worshiping them like you know, like Sunday morning heroes, you know? Yeah, I get it. it. It's hard, though. I mean, some people commit to that, right? And they're fully committed to it. And that's their life. And that's what's important to them. And that's what they value, right? Is that's their escape from reality is yeah. focused on that. And that's why creating the creative arts, I think, helps everybody. Because then on those days that they're feeling down and depressed, they can say, you know what? That's the show I want to watch. I really enjoy this one. It's written well. And my mind gets it, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why I think every, we're, it's hard to make everybody happy, but everybody does technically get what they want right now. If you just focus on what is your, you like, you could just do that and you wouldn't have to focus on anyone else. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, for peace. Opportunity is there for peace for people. I think they don't, just can't find it. <laughs> I, I just wish you were taking a stop doing, being so petty on, uh, on Facebook and Twitter with each other. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. So I had this one guy. I, I made a mistake, of course, like, it, it, again, ignorance is strength, right? So I made a statement and uh, it's based on, again, I went through public school in Northern California, middle of nowhere. So it, you guess how good the education system is. I have no idea, right? So um, I, I, am, I am ignorant. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know what I know and I don't know what I don't know. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so... Uh, I made a comment. This guy just started out with criticism, just started with it. And it, and it upset me a little bit because it was like, dude, like I get that I'm wrong, but why do you have to like say you intended that you meant to do that? It's like, whoa, like, so it, um, I, I kind of brushed him off and I didn't engage. Right. I was just like, Hey, I'm sorry. You know, like, mm. I, you know, I didn't say I'm sorry. I just kind of responded with, Hey, like, okay, I get it. You're making a lot of good points. Thank you. You know, mm -hmm. And, uh, and I had to sit on it for a day and I came up with a, a quote, um, afterwards and I shared it on my feed, uh, which, uh, yeah, I'll pull it up real quick just so I don't get it wrong. <laughs> yeah. So, it, and it goes right in line with what you're thinking about the criticizing. It's, uh, when you discover what someone has said is wrong or not factual, right? When you think, when you, when you discover that, do you think they meant to be wrong or that they're trying their best to be right. Hmm. You see, like everyone's trying their best to be right. Yeah. They're, 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 they're just trying to uh, do the right thing. It's the best answer that they can provide. That's their thought and with their experiences and everything else. So we should be guiding each other, not criticizing, right? Mm -hmm. It should be yeah. more about collaborating.
right? Actual collaboration. But see, yeah, it's it's and, and it's kind of like the same concept. But work with students, you know, I uh, I work at a uh, at an uh, uh, a nonprofit, and we work with a lot of schools. And you know, at, uh, when I'm training people on on behavior, you know, I I think one of the biggest things people that are brand new to these programs think about they're like, what if the kids are just bad? You know, like, and one of the first things they throw out there with behavior training is like. Whose goal was it when you were a kid, like every day to just get into trouble, like to just, you know, yeah. be in the principal's office? Yeah, that was your objective to be there every day. No way. Like, absolutely nobody. Right. Yeah. So we have to rethink and reshape, you know, our perspective when it comes to that, because there's some kids, yeah, that they tend to get into a lot of trouble, but it's not their intention. No, right? they're trying their best. That's what they're doing. And they just are. It's learned behavior from somewhere that they're struggling with that they just don't know the right answer. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, it, and that comes to the, like what I was thinking about with your pod, the name of your podcast, which I like, Ignorance is Strength, because people typically say ignorance is bliss, right? Mm -hmm. and, it, it, and it is, right? That's peaceful if you're ignorant, if you're completely ignorant. Um, but ignorance is strength. You're, you know, I liked it because it makes me think about using it as a tool, using mm -hmm. ignorance as a tool. And to turn ignorance into strength I think it needs to be um, added to with vulnerability and awareness, right? Like you add those two things because it, it, you have to be vulnerable to, to say, hey, I don't know this. I'm done, mm. right? Please tell me. Someone, does anybody know? Um, but you have to make sure you surround yourself with people who actually want to help. Yeah. Sometimes if you're like, hey, I don't know this, they're like, what an idiot. It's like, okay, that's the wrong person to tell yeah. that. <laughs> See, and, and I don't mind, you know, being an idiot for a minute because – yeah. In, two minutes, in two minutes, I'm going to know what I'm talking about. Exactly. And that's the way I feel about it. You're, we're, um, I think it's a mindset change where it's thinking about, okay, how do I be better? How can I, how can I make myself one step better than where I'm at? And I just don't think a lot of people are truly open to that immediate change every single moment that you're going, right? Mm -hmm. Like you, as soon as you get new information, you should be adapting immediately, right? Like you, you learn, you, you heard something new immediately. You should be, Oh, okay. That, now it's this. Okay. Got it. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm wrong. Right. Yeah. And that's, that's kind of the whole point. You know, I wanted to, with the podcast, I really wanted to delve into things that I don't know anything about. You yeah. know, my first words you hear me say is I don't know shit, but that's okay. <laughs> you know, yeah, let's do <laughs> and, 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 um, that's, that's my mindset on it because my first episode was about steroids and I don't know anything about steroids, you know, but I have a cousin who, who's like big into them. And, you know, he, uh, he was giving us like, uh, the details, like, this is what it's like, you know, this is what it's going to, I'll probably have to be on in my whole life kind of thing. And it's like, damn, like I had no idea, you know, it was, and it was really interesting. And I wanted to make sure that that was the first episode because I'm like, if, if, if I can tell this story about it and, 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 and my, my cousin's, not going to disagree with this. He's kind of a nobody. <laughs> yeah. Random Joe, you know? Yeah, but, but he knows something. He knows what he knows, right? He knows yeah. his story and he knows his life. Right. And so my uh, that was another part of it. He's like, let's get some random, you know, everyday people on here, right? Yeah. And tell their stories. And, you know, um, they're going to talk about some things that maybe you're not familiar with. Or if you yeah. are familiar with, you know, you're, it's going to resonate with you. And, yep. and, and those who don't know what we're talking about are going to get it. Like, I, I think yeah. some of the episodes about abuse really kind of hit home with a lot of people. Yeah. And they were able to connect and, you know, they're like, wow, I really enjoyed that episode. And uh, well, I will tell you, I mean, life, life is, is not easy, right? Everyone's dealt the cards they're dealt and we deal with it the best we can. I understand abuse. I've been in those situations and whatnot. I'm not going to say that it's more or less than anybody else's, but it's mine. Um, but uh, but it's made me who I am today, and I'm happy about that every single day. Even in, even the days that I'm sitting in pain, it's still better than the alternative, which is not sitting here at all. So yeah. um, it's getting past that hurdle of you being very depressed and understanding that you still want to be here. Mm -hmm. uh, I will say uh, back on the ignorance is, is strength. And I, I will say the last time for me that I found that moment, uh, I thought about that before we uh, jumped on, but I wanted to share that, which is um, I do cybersecurity professionally for a global pharmaceutical chemicals company. Okay. Um, 
they sent me over to uh, San Francisco for a very large security conference there. All these different vendors and everybody else kind of comes in and they talk about cybersecurity. They also bring in different heads of uh, companies, CEOs and everything, and they all chat. Um, one person that they brought in was uh, Avril Haines. She's the director of national intelligence. Mm. And she was talking about how cybersecurity is changing in the modern world based on the Ukraine engagement. Um, and I, I did work with the Department of Defense for about seven years. Um, I ended at Special Operations Command after a few after a few years being there, um, mm. being in charge of their cybersecurity for classified unclassified networks. It was a good experience, solid. Um, but so I speak the lingo of the like DOD. That's what I. That's what my point is there. Mm -hmm. So I was listening to her speak and I lost her. I, I like trying to keep up, right? Trying to keep up with and understanding what she's saying and what she's talking about. I lost her probably about 80, 85% of the way into her talk. Oh. And, I was like, and I'm like, oh man, like it, it, this is where the, the uh, vulnerability and the awareness comes in where it's like, okay, man, I don't know what she's talking about. And then thinking, hey, you know what? Does anybody else? Like I start looking around and everyone's just looking at her and staring there. And I'm like, if, if she lost me and I feel pretty confident about these topics. Yeah, right that experience in my life, then she likely lost a lot of these other people too. And it made me think about um, intelligent people, intelligent people, smart people speaking intelligently are only going to be understood by other intelligent people. In order to get to the masses, to get to everybody, you have to simplify your language. You have mm -hmm. to bring it down to simple words and everything so that people can follow and track and understand. And, uh, and that, that was something that made me think more, think more about the ignorance is strength, right? Where it's like, for, I found my moment and that's the lesson learned for me from that. So. Cool, man. I'm going to, I'm going to start using some of these uh, stories. I'm like, this is what, this is what the podcast is about. When, it, when anybody <laughs> asks me, what's your podcast about? Listen to this guy. He, he described it for me. But, <laughs> he uh, did it. <laughs> uh, I, you know, I, I get that question a lot when um, uh, I get introduced to, to certain people that want to be on the show. Uh, and then, uh, you know, uh, we're, you and I were put together by Steve, right? Steve Drenner? Yeah, Steve Drenner. Yeah, yeah. So, I, I, you know, I really love when Steve uh, kind of puts me on the on the phone with somebody kind of like uh, um, in the hot seat. You know, I'll be, I'll, I'll be like at lunch break at work or something. Tell yeah. me about your podcast. I'll be like, uh, <laughs> you know, I'll start. I, yeah, dude, I was talking to him for like five minutes and I start getting into one story, right? And I, I got plenty, but I get into one story mid story. He's just like, hold on, I'm going to start pulling people in. And he starts pulling people into the call. I'm like, I don't uh -huh. even know you. like, I don't even know you, Steve, but you're just uh -huh. immediately connecting me with people. So it was really, really nice guy. Really. Yeah, but it's like, sometimes it's be, tell me about your podcast. I'm like, I don't know. It's like, I talk to, you know, I talk to people and, we have a good time, you know, like I don't have a specific, uh, um, you know, it's not fina about financial, you know, literature. It's not about, yeah. you know, entertainment. It's it, I mean, we just talk to cool people. And we have cool stories. Like that's all it is. It's fun. Yeah. No, that's good. And I'm glad we did so much prep time to get ready for this. You know, we got a lot of content to cover. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you know what? The prep time, look, I'm, I'm, I used to be big on it. I used yeah. to do like four pages of like, all right, this oh, is what I'm going to yeah. ask. And, and then yeah. I thought about it. I'm like, I don't ever get to those questions, you there know, you and, and, and I really, I enjoy, you know, the more authentic kind of, uh, you know, get to know you type of uh, conversation we're having now because people feel like a fly on the wall when they're listening to that, you know, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's like a, a talk show instead of like an actual discussion. Yeah. Cause I've, I heard a podcast one time that I really hated and it was like super, like scripted almost, you know, like somebody uh, was reading. I'm like, I cannot stand that. You know, like you, you I know, am having a good day today. How are you? <laughs> essentially like that. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I was like, this, this is not enjoyable, you know, because people change their, 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 the tone of voice and everything. And I'm like, exactly. it's just so, it's so phony, but mm. no, you know, but this, yeah, this is my style. I just like, you know, I, 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 I prep a little bit. I, I, I look at, you know, give me, give me the bullet points. Give me the gist of it. Right. And I uh, see some things that get wrong. Right. And I'm like, is he joining us from Norris? Because I'm like, no, the timing is so off because I've had to talk to people from the UK or from, I forget, uh, Iceland. Uh, everybody knows Einar, who's a podcaster. I know we're, po if we're a podcaster, you know, and you're in uh, the, the Steve's network there, you know who Einar is. He's, he's an actor who's been trying to make it out in Iceland and, 
you seem to be having some some, some success now. So awesome! Glad glad to hear it from uh, glad to hear from him. Um, but yeah, man, you're you're you know you're you're in some things. You know, you're doing a background work. Um, what else you got on your plate? Whew, uh, you you name it, I love it. So I love doing home projects around the house and everything. Um, also, I do uh, I do these scavenger hunts for my family that I love, like live action role playing scavenger hunts. And uh, every hollow, so I, I've done it with my brothers. We kind of do it when we're traveling or we're kind of someplace uh, different. Um, and then uh, my daughter gets it at Halloween time, and I kind of create these worlds for them to play in. And then uh, I've, I've got a mathematics degree, so I've got a lot of that cryptography and everything else that I've studied. And I add in um, basically like what she's learning in school into like a, uh, like a crossword where she has wow. to like solve that with the content or whatever else or math things, or she has to turn something into a cryptex clue. And then I, like I have cryptexes and everything else. I design like different rooms in the house with all sorts of things. It's a lot of fun. This last time, uh, she had to go retrieve a laser from the uh, evil scientist's lair. And then the laser had to go destroy these like egg sacs, which were uh, black nylon balloons. And you use the laser and it kind of like blows it up. And so I put jewels inside of it and stuff too. And she uh, she loves the treasure. <laughs> so it's like yeah. a little beauties adventure. Yeah, it sounds really cool, man. Like yeah. I was going to say maybe something like, uh, you know, if you have like, like, like a Zelda theme, that might be cool. Yeah, exactly. It's something like that. So I, I love doing that with different themes and different worlds. Um, so it's pretty fun. It's a, that's something that I love doing. Yeah, and um, you uh, you you mentioned to me that there was one uh, particular uh, time that you ended up uh, in a compromising position because. Of- oh yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so uh, my brothers and I are a little crazy. We love doing a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Back in 2018, we did Running of the Bulls in Pamplona. Um, and it was, uh, it was a wild ride. And so we, uh, we started our run right after dead man's turn. Dead man's turn is like a, uh, like a cross like that. I don't know if you, people are, aren't going to understand it, but it's a sharp S turn almost right without, mm. uh, without the curves. And, um, what's funny is there was an ATM sitting right on that corner. So it, it was funny to think like someone's like getting cash while the bulls are running by and being like, no, come on, come on, come on. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but we started after dead man's turn because the bulls are going to kind of like pile into there and that's where people get hurt. So it was the last like 200, 300 meters. Um, we're standing there in the crowd. We're dressed in the red and white, red and white, uh, outfits that they wear. So everyone's in red and white ready to run with them. And you just start hearing the surge and sound of the crowd and everything. And your blood starts boiling, right? It's a cobblestone road. So we started running and uh, when the bulls got past me, they were, I'm five, nine. They were probably right at my head height, like the back of the bull. So they, those things were huge. Um, wow. I, I'm running. I lost my brothers in the crowd. I come up on my younger brother who's lifting people up from a pile. Like people had kind of fallen down and he's helping people up. So I stand beside him and I start helping people up. We get to the last guy and the last guy just kind of angrily shoves us off. And it was kind of like, Hey, you know what? Like we got to go. Like, so mm-hmm. I, I, I was like, step on him. And I, I didn't step on him heavily. Right. But it was enough to kind of maybe warn him that he should probably get up. Right. Yeah. That you should probably get up, man, because you're going to get stomped and it's not going to be good. So, um, so we continued on. And then as I was finishing the run, I was kind of um, jogging beside my friend who showed up there also. And uh, I was kind of jogging backwards, being a little jovial. And this older woman runs by me and she's looking at me like I'm crazy. Because uh, she's like, we're going to die, right? Like the bulls are here. <laughs> um, and I was, it kind of made me laugh. So we get into the, um, into the Coliseum that they have there. And they, the bulls run in, they bring them down underneath. But then in the center, what they do is they bring out smaller bulls, like 400, 500 pound ones that rough people up. And mm-hmm. uh, although we all didn't speak the same language, we worked together to make sure if that bull got someone, you get the bull off of the person, right? Okay. So every, everyone's helping everybody else kind of just play with these little bulls and watching them get tore up. And uh, I saw probably a guy that was like 215 built, knocked out cold. They had to carry him out. Uh, So I was sidestepping and I was moving around the bull and I was slapping it on the butt a few times. I got too confident uh, at about number five or six, probably. 
um, I slapped it on the butt and that thing spun around and it, we locked eyes. And, and when that happened, I was like, oh man, it's time, right? It's time. So it, it comes at me. I put both my hands on the horns uh -huh. and, and I, I, you know, for like a half, probably not even half a second, like a quarter second, I, you have that feeling of like, yeah, I can hold this. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, so that bull lifted me up uh, into the air. I got me on the ground and then just nuzzled right into my chest and everything. Right. And I went into the fetal position because that's all, all that's left for you to do when you're getting taken down by a bull. And uh, it stomped on my uh, left buttock and left a nice deep purple bruise for me. Oh, it gave you a receipt there, right? Yeah, you got a little receipt. I got stamped. And then uh, I stood up and I looked down and I'm kind of dusting myself off. My seam on my pants had ripped from about my ankle all the way up to about three inches below the groin area. Ooh. And uh, I was like, whew, that was close. <laughs> yeah, man. I was going to say, you didn't, you didn't get that consent from the bull. That's why it, uh, I know. I had to pay you back. Yeah, he didn't even, he didn't, I, I didn't bring flowers for him, so he's probably upset. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, I don't do any of that stuff. Uh, I'm, I, 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 uh, I don't know. I, I, first of all, I hate running. <laughs> I'll, yeah. I'll probably be the first one right there just to say, I give up. But it's so, <laughs> you know, it's so crazy that that's still going on, you know, like, yeah. um, because so many things that are, um, you know, time honored like that have gone to the wayside because of cancel culture and things oh, I like will that. Say it stopped. They stopped. So since 2018, it stopped for two years and then they brought it back. But now they don't do the um, the killing of the bull. Uh -huh. So they've stopped killing the bulls, I think, <laughs> after 2018. But they did bring the bull running back now but least. it's now it's like with like a, an extra fence or something or what's going on there oh yeah i don't i haven't looked into the details of it i don't know yeah i mean i i understand it's, it wasn't like the most you know humane thing you know but it's still like it was it was a cultural thing now that you know you don't you won't see anymore and like what yeah. if you know they, they they you know they have the 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 those towers what do they call it uh the towers of castellon i think that people built build uh in the communities with just people right where mm -hmm. you have like the like they you, you have the biggest people on the bottom of, of this you know human uh people made structure and then you have the tiniest person in the village climb up to the top like a christmas tree right oh that, yeah. nice have you seen that before i think it's in Spanish. I have not. no i haven't uh, seen that so like what if they deem that to be like you know unsafe or whatever and then they you know they're, they 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 don't they cancel it too you know or yeah. it's like you know yeah, it's a cool feat, you know, and, and it's a, and it's a yeah, thing that a yeah, whole that, village does together. And if they've been doing it for years, what's the problem? If they if they select to do it, I think people should be encouraged more to do their own thing if they're not hurting anybody else, right? Mm -hmm. If you volunteer to do that and you end up hurt or whatever else, that's your responsibility. Yeah. Uh, of course, it does have an impact on healthcare and things like other services that might have to help those people now. Mm -hmm. um, so that's something that to be considered, I guess. But um, but I think people should be encouraged to at least have those time honored traditions. It's very important. Yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, man. So like we got you know we talked a little about your, a little bit about your acting, a little bit, a bit about your uh, you know your your creative uh, uh, games for your daughter there, and uh, some craziness you you've been through. But any anything else you want to uh, throw out there and discuss on the podcast? No, I don't. I don't have anything else unless you have some more questions for me. We can. I, I mean, I could keep going with all sorts of stories and things. I grew up in Northern California. I've fished. I've hunted. I've uh, drove. I've been out on the ocean uh, there for a long time. Growing up, did a lot. Growing up, uh, my father was California Highway Patrol, so he huh. did for about twenty-eight years. Um, huh. Yep, and then. What? And then uh, I went to Norwich uh, Military School, and then after that. Department of Defense for a few years, and now, uh, now the the uh, private sector. So yeah, all over the world uh, traveled. Let's say I've went, I've been to Iceland twice. That was, uh, right. that was a beautiful place out there. Now, uh, are you are you kind of doing the podcast like circuit here, going around doing all kinds of different podcasts? That's kind of, yep, that's kind of what's happening now. Is that a couple of people are just asking me on to just talk, right, mm -hmm. and uh, to get to know me more. I do want to ask, like, if you feel 
because I've gotten, you know, a few people on and, and uh, that, you know, how do I put it? They're more, and, and everybody who, who, who I think works with, uh, with Steven gets them on. Um, so like, you know, I've had a, a couple of people who are, you know, pretty you know, noteworthy, I think, you know, like, uh, like I talk about Larry Hankin and, you know, Bruce Valanche and stuff like that. And people listen to it, but they don't really like, I, I think for some, they don't really care. They're like, eh, they're famous, but I don't, what do I care? You know, it's like, uh, I was, I was really kind of like, uh, when I, when I, when I heard the feedback for the Bruce Valanche episode, I was like, really? I mean, he was interesting. He was funny. And yeah. you, didn't, you didn't listen to it, you know, like, yeah, you know, they like the Larry Hankin one because talk about Breaking Bad and you can't talk about Breaking Bad without people going <laughs> giddy. Yeah, of course. Of course. You got a good topic to cover. Uh-huh. But do you feel like, you know, going on this, these podcasts, you know, it's really um, like it's helping you do your thing and become an, uh, an actor and, and reach your goals? Or, I mean, are you kind of why are you doing it? I, I guess I'm asking because. There's a lot of people like 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 Larry Hankin. He he just mentioned like, hey, that's you know two thousand five, uh, you know, or five hundred here, a couple hundred here, you know, that never heard of me before. Maybe now they're gonna, you know, buy my book or watch my movie or whatever. Yep. I mean, for me personally, uh, I kind of keep my life compartmentalized uh, because uh, for me, it's hard to be like a working professional plus doing acting plus I do teaching uh, part time as well. Mm. Um, and then everything else that I have on my plate. So it's hard for me to keep the, all of those straight and kind of be that same person everywhere. And that's where I find acting and whatnot works well for me because I've learned to adapt in many different environments. So um, I think what the podcast helps me do is kind of put it all together so that I can be that one person, right? Which is what we always strive to be. Because mm -hmm. so, I think a lot of people uh, are not just one person, right? They put on a persona where they are <laughs> And then they put on a different persona depending on who else is in the room. Mm -hmm. Right. So, uh, so I think the podcast for me is finding that strength, right? Yeah, that's for sure. To be, to be honest and vulnerable. Mm -hmm. No, um, when it comes to like social media, how big are you on there? Are you kind of like, uh, it's a necessary evil or are you more like, I love it. Or you just kind of, you just, you just do it. I kind of, I think I, I don't have any negative thoughts about it. I, I don't, I don't like using it a lot um, for myself, but I do enjoy um, right now. I share a lot of philosophy and positivity and uh, different things that I've thought about very unique information on my Facebook feed. Okay. Check out. Um, and I, I go for different runs in my area. So sometimes I'm taking pictures of different areas and it makes me kind of think of something right and connect some dots. So when people are looking for maybe those positive or encouraging things, uh, that's typically what I'm putting out there. See, I'm, uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of the opposite, where I'm like, I hate social media. But to <laughs> me, it's, it's a necessary evil, you know, like, you have to have it. Otherwise, you know, people aren't going to listen to you. And to me, it's like, just listen to the podcast. Like, I don't post anything on my Instagram other than the posters of, of you know, who's coming out on a podcast this week. And yep. I mean, I don't share any stories or anything like that. Um, but somehow, you know... It's so weird because I, I get the most follows on, on YouTube, but I only released the, the audio version of the podcast. Oh, that's the interesting. Video. Yeah. Yeah. That's, a, that's an interesting trend. I wonder why do you think that is? I have no idea. Maybe it's, yeah, I found a niche audience in India somewhere. <laughs> Somebody really loves you and they shared you with all their friends and whatnot. Yeah. And they have a lot of friends, you know, in that's India. Good. That's good, though. That's good yeah. for you, right? Do you yeah. get any of the proceeds from that or is it just numbers? Is it once again? Do you get paid for that or is it no, just No, you know, but check this out. I, I, I'm going to check out how, how I get it, how I would be able to get paid because yeah. I have, like, I'll have some episodes that are like below 100, which I, I expect, right? But then I'll have these anomalies where, you know, uh, an episode reached like 10K in like less than a week. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, what? I'm like, who's listening to this 10,000 times? Because I didn't leave it on play, you know. <laughs> yeah, there's not enough time in the day for that. Yeah, and 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 it's so weird because, um, you know, I look at my statistics on on the other website that I use, uh, the hosting website, and sometimes it won't even capture it. I'm like, no, uh, it, it'll show that YouTube has only like eight plays. I'm like, that's YouTube said that it had, you know, ten thousand plays. Don't be playing around with me, like, you know, <laughs> cutting me short there. Yeah, exactly. Right? Come on now. Y'all need to communicate. 
That's funny. But um, no, I, 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 I really don't like using social media, but that's just my thing, man. I'm, I've, I've never been a fan of like the whole, you know, uh, people bickering back and forth. And I think it's a, it's a tool to be used because in the first, the first time in, in, in forever, right. This is the first time in forever that I could reach out to some Sherpa in Africa, right? Like real quick, like this, right? Like, mm -hmm. like I can touch him immediately. So there's, um, I will say with the cybersecurity background, there's plenty of scams out there in the world. Yeah. Um, these people are dark and they're after you and they want, and, and if you're talking to them, they're winning. That's the way they see it. If you keep engaging them, they're winning. So mm -hmm. that's what they want you to do is keep talking. Um, I like to waste their time. I like to, yeah. I like to play with them. them. Um, one time I had to go really dark and I'll show you how dark they are because this is, this was an interesting experience. So I was toying with this one scammer. He was trying to get money out of me and he started making threats to my life and my family, even though he mm. had no details or anything else. Right. So um, they try to get an emotional response going. Right. So I simulated a psychological break and a suicide. Um, I simulated that, right? And um, the person, I, I went radio silent for about three or four days. The person kept messaging saying, hey, I just want to check, is everything okay? What's going on, right? And I was like, good, this is, this is where I want them, right? Mm. And, uh, and then I reach out as a family member and I provide some details, an obit, I, I, I created some things because I want to, I want, I know this person's a scammer. I know what they do to people and it's horrible. Right. Mm. So I want to see how dark, how dark they go. Right. So I provide that information. I also provide like a Venmo saying, Hey, if you want to provide donations for the yeah. family, drop it here. I'm like, maybe I can get some money from the scammer. Right. <laughs> maybe I can turn the table. Maybe if they have a heart, they'll actually donate something, you know? And I know that all my information was very valid with what I provided. So there was no way that they could challenge it. Um, they of course challenge it. I respond, okay, well, his sister's going to be here. She's the one m managing these details and whatnot. I was just the nice mom the first time. So then I come in as the aggressive sister, um, and, uh, start toying with them again. And I will tell you, this is how dark this person is. They were talking to someone, they made them that then they believe that committed suicide because of what they threatened. Right. Mm -hmm. They're talking to a family member with their obit and everything else. They still asked for money. They wow. still asked for money. That's why I'm saying if you're talking to them, they're winning. It's ridiculous. You have to be so cautious in the modern era with who you're talking to online. Mm -hmm. That's nuts, man. Yeah, uh, that's a good one, right? <laughs> uh, scamming a scammer. I was kind of hoping you got some money from them, but. Maybe no, somebody out no. there will take that tip and get it from them. Yeah, maybe. Maybe someone else can turn the tables on some of them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I thought I, I didn't even realize it was so it was so dark. I thought most times it's just, uh, you know, some uh, some guy from Nepal asking to see pictures of, of Vajin and Bob. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or some Nigerian prince, right? <laughs> uh, no, they, they, they know they know we have already got we've already got the yeah the, the information on that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they, they already know. That one's there, been going around since uh, email started. Uh, the, there's a good one that they did for a while um, where they would pretend to be like the FBI and say like, hey, we saw you communicating with these people. You need to give us your information now, right? Again, it's all emotional based. If, you're, if you feel emotional from someone that you haven't even met, right? Mm -hmm. Like, or from a message, right? You're having that strong emotional response. Just don't play. Just don't play. Wait. Wait and think about it. I think that, you know, what's worse, though, is that when it gets to, like, the point where they're, uh, they're so convincing mm -hmm. um, and they start taking money from, like, you know, uh, people that are, are, are either elderly or in their, you know, in, their, in the middle age and are kind of like, you know, they don't have the best sense as far as, like, what's real and what's not. You know, maybe somebody's yeah. parents. And, and, you know, they'll start saying, like, well, this is, uh, you know, you owe tax money, right? And they'll start, you know, this whole process, make it seem legit. And they'll just, you know, start taking their money. And that happens a lot. Yeah, you know, it, it, it does. But all they have to do is agree. That's all they have to do is just like when the person's talking to you and they, you say something they don't like, right? They'll just say, oh yeah, I agree. You know, like, and then you keep talking, right? Like that's what they want. 
again, they'll, they'll, they'll be nice. They don't have to be mean until they want to be. They want to get that, build that emotional bond with you first, and then they want to use it against you. Yeah. All right. Well, DJ Shatin, um, definitely a lot of, a lot of, a lot of fun on this conversation, man. I, 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 uh, I didn't think we'd be talking about scamming and scammers like that, but <laughs> that, that part was, that part was a surprise. It's interesting, man. But yeah, you know, as good. far as, as far as, you know, your, uh, your, your, your career goes with acting. I, I, I really do, uh, you know, wish you the best of luck. I mean, I'd like to see you in some stuff, man. I'm gonna be looking for you. And, uh, what was that? Uh, and, and I'm gonna watch it again. Uh, don't look up. Right in the beginning, when they're trying to board the plane, you'll see like four military guys walking by in the background. I'm the one right all the way to the left. Got it. <laughs> all right. Um, but yeah, any, any anything else you want to plug? Any social media before we go? Uh, no, just check out my Instagram. Check out my Facebook. See if it's something that you like and you want to follow. Okay, and then that would be just uh, at DJ Shatin. Yep, it is. All right, cool. Well, right. Uh, it's been yeah, like I said, been a lot of fun. You know. Um, if ever you want to jump on again, we'll talk some cool stories like that. I mean, I always yeah. welcome you back as well. Yeah, if you got different uh, topics you want to cover and everything, I'm totally open to it. Thank you Absolutely. so much, Fabian, for having, having me on. All right, for everybody listening at home, I appreciate it. Thank you. Fuck you and good night. podcasts on spotify apple podcasts and google podcasts like follow and share on facebook and instagram at ignorance of strength podcast and on twitter at the ignorance pod